There will be no time behind bars for a former Kelowna RCMP officer who pleaded guilty to kick, kicking a man in the face. This morning, a judge handed Jeff Mantler a suspended sentence plus 18 months probation. The former police officer is not banned from owning firearms, as Crown had been asking for, but he was given a fine and ordered to do community service. In January 2011, Mantler was caught on video kicking Buddy Tavares in the face while on his hands and knees. And with that, we're back again. This is Radio Free Canada. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. Stay tuned for 15 minutes while we catch up to the news and the way the news is not reporting the news about Jeff Mantler and Buddy Tavares. This is a special edition of Radio Free Canada. Hang on. This is the story. Good evening. He's already been ridiculed and threatened on the internet, vilified in the media, and hurt emotionally and financially. Now he's been sentenced by the courts. Former Kelowna RCMP officer Jeffrey Adam Mantler escaped jail time today, but he did not escape a criminal record for kicking Buddy Tavares in the face during that notorious arrest in January 2011. Blaine Gaffney has the sentencing details. Going into court, daughter at his side, Buddy Tavares was resigned to the fact the RCMP officer who kicked him in the face was not going to jail. He's done. Yeah. But, but he, uh, jail goes, I, I don't care. You know, his career's done. Former RCMP Constable Jeff Mantler was sentenced today for assault causing bodily harm in the incident in January 2011 that was captured on a cell phone camera. Noting the force used was severe and unwarranted, inflicted on a vulnerable and innocent man, resulting in terrible consequences for the recently brain-injured victim, the judge suspended sentence, giving Mantler 18 months probation, 50 hours of community work service, and a $50 fine. The judge rejected the defense request for probation leading to a conditional discharge which would have left Jeff Mantler without a criminal record, saying that would be contrary to the public interest and would not help restore the public trust that Mantler breached. The judge added what kept him from sending Mantler to jail was the officer's degree of moral culpability. According to the judge, there was no malice nor gratuitous violence. He was not intending to punish Mr. Tavares. He reacted out of panic and a sense of urgency as opposed to anger. The judge attributed some of Mantler's serious mistakes and misjudgments in the arrest of Tavares to the officer's lack of experience and a gross absence of supervision by senior Mounties. Sentiments echoed by Mantler's lawyer. This occurred on a Friday at 10 a.m. The uh Members would estimate there must have been at least 10 to 15 NCOs, corporal, uh, uh, the rank corporal and higher, and a minimum of eight years service. Not one responded. Facing dismissal proceedings, Jeff Mantler instead quit the RCMP, which he feels abandoned him in the wake of the Tavares assault. He's a, he was an excellent member, a rising star. Uh, the hardest worker on the watch, a man who's going to promote through the ranks. And you know what, you throw that all away in, in, in five minutes, and he made one mistake, and they completely discarded him. Buddy Tavares hopes the RCMP has learned something from what happened to him. Mandler's life is screwed. I mean, my whole family's life went through hell. So something good has got to come out of this. The judge expressed his sincere hope Tavares would accept an earlier request from Jeff Mantler for a private meeting to personally apologize. Tavares says that's not going to happen. And he shouldn't be sorry. He should be ashamed. He should be very ashamed. He embarrassed himself, his family, the RCMP. He embarrassed everybody. With Mantler sentenced, Tavares now just wants to move on with his life. Hey, I'm done with all this shit. I've spent enough time thinking about him. I'm done. It's over. At least the criminal proceedings are over. His civil suit against Jeff Mandler and the RCMP is still ahead. Blaine Gaffney, Global News, Kelowna. Well, the judge described the video of the assault as a luxury in the court proceedings, which he said would make a very interesting case study. That's because the testimony of many witnesses about what they saw of the assault, including from RCMP officers, was completely at odds from what the video showed. And that's the way we start the show off. That's the I, that's Blaine Gaffney, my favorite guy. Yeah, it's an interesting spin he's using there. <laughs> 
Uh, we do have some interesting clips about CHBC, about uh, police brutality, about the RCMP in specific, and the global problem that is police brutality. But we were at the court case. We were at the sentencing. Yes, we were. And we're here to bring you the story that they're not talking about in major news. I, of course, am Darren Howard. And I, of course, am Robert Nisbet. We are missing the girl in the treehouse right now because she's on seminar and getting ready to put things together. Monica Selmark is doing our segment right here at Radio Free Canada talking about your health and is going to be talking about the way to make more money using your brains and your spirit all at the same time. Seems like a good trade-off to me. So that's coming up. We do apologize for her absence, but we are here to make sure that we you know, fill you in on exactly what occurred down at the courthouse yesterday. Well, it was kind of funny how they portrayed the criminal as a victim. I know. Like, all of a sudden, here's a guy who's pleaded guilty, and they lead off pleading the case for Jeff Mantler on the news. Yeah. I mean, they're saying, oh, he suffered emotionally. Oh, he's been beaten up in the public. Do you think it might have been a flashback from some of the negative press he's been getting? <laughs> Perhaps? They're saying this, and it's an amazing case. Uh, they're, you know, they're pleading the case and saying things like, oh, well, this is over, and then, you know, we've resigned. They've resigned themselves. We're going to take this apart a bit better in the next segment of this radio show this morning because you have to take a look at the way the news does things to understand why we don't have solutions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got posters going out, CHBC News, leading seniors astray one broadcast at a time. That one's coming up. We would like to thank Blaine Gaffney for continuing to improve our performance by behaving exactly the way corporate news does. Well, you know, that's where he gets his money. <laughs> And, of course, they cater to the advertisers as well. I know, but it's always representing the 1%, and he's a solid representative there, in my strong opinion. But remember, you're only looking at, what, 20 reporters on the uh, on the steps? Yeah. Okay, and we got got 1,000 members of our Facebook group? I but, think you know, they might be a bit outnumbered. I don't know. Whatever. They've got fake demographics that back them up, though. It's really awesome. Yeah. I got to... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because uh, when the sentencing was going, the hearing was on, there was actually a separate recording that they didn't run from Kelowna. Yeah. They didn't carry Blaine Gaffney in Vancouver. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, maybe he doesn't play well to the bigger uh, audiences. Yeah, you know, you got to think about where the career is going, right? You know. But at any rate, far be it for me to point to any incriminating elbows here or anything. There were many other stories in police brutality. Usually we're mocking abjectly. But it was angering, and I was a little miffed when I heard the result of $50 fine, 18 months of probation, and 50 hours community service. Wow. Uh, and he gets to keep his gun. And he gets to keep his gun. This guy's shaking when he's carrying one. Okay? And of course, that doesn't put the public at risk. No, no, no. The public's perfectly safe with this guy wandering around. Remember, the judge thinks that he's the shining example. <laughs> Yeah, there was a bit of apple polishing from former um, employee. Self, it. yeah. Hang on a second. I got to read this one. Constable Mantler is currently thirty years old. He was regarded by many as a rising star within the ranks of the Kelowna RCMP. Within a very short period of time, he was selected for plain clothes detail in the property crimes unit, which shows you. Hiring practices at the RCMP. <laughs> well, if he was a rising star, well, he didn't have to rise too high because the bar is really low. Yeah, where's that bar set? I don't know. Spittoon level. Hang on. Let's run this. Uh, um, uh, just one more quick case on Mantler, and then we got some... Oh, man. So the conditional discharge, if that wasn't granted, he's got a, he's got a record. You think that's fair? That's good. That part is good. I thought he was going to get one. You think he should ever be a police officer again? Not a chance. No. That got me heat. He had no priors. Assault, blah, blah, blah. Systemic failure in the whole way the case was handled from the 9-11 call down. But also, Bantler's held up as a shining example, and just because he has no previous convictions. Yeah. It's not like he hasn't been investigated for assault before. You have to take a look, and we're uh, doing a bit of a documentary right now, more than a bit of one. We've got a full-length documentary coming out. 
centered around this case because this case is a really good case example of the way things go really wrong and are not reported. Remember, the judge during his sentencing said that people who were fully informed will appreciate the facts of the case. That's right. He even underlined it within the, the document itself. Now, fully informed means you know that Jeff Mantler was a mall cop. You know that he was a first aid attendant. And that he's had problems with management before. That's right. Two cases, Judge Takahashi with Manjeet Batty. That case, the judge was provided Mantler's audio recording of his excuse as to why he assaulted Manjeet Batty. However, that judge didn't take into consideration that tape recording of Jeff Mantler admitting to it because he wanted he was getting Jeff Mantler right off. Well, don't forget that Manjit Batty was a brown-skinned person of questionable virtue as well. Yes, and the news not covering the story did not cover the fact that Manjit Batty is a business graduate. He's got his degree. He's gone through his education. And as anybody knows, with a degree, there are no jobs out there. Of course. But he's got brown skin, so they never talked about the fact that Manjit Batty had fallen very far from a super professional situation where everybody's ending up right now. Yeah, I know. I mean, if the economy keeps going the way it is, we'll all be criminals. That's right. And the major thing about this was, that, uh, and uh, one more point, is the fact that they mentioned social media and public disgrace as being part of the process that, you know, punished Jeff Mantler. We agree. Totally. He was punished by uh, public opinion. It's just that it was brought to him at light speed en masse because people could voice their concerns instantaneously on the Internet, and that scares the guys who are in charge. Now, why do they want to get control of the Internet oh, so badly? Oh, man, they can't control what we say and what our opinion is. Now, we're going to connect the dots here. The most important thing to understand is that they, on the news, they'll do background on everybody except police brutality issues. Now, we're talking about a systemic problem, and this is sexual abuse cases. Yeah. So what do you got? Of this young child that was assaulted? Yes. This is really scary out of Ottawa. This oh. police is being investigated for sexual assault and uh, restriction of a minor. Let's run the tape. You be the judge. A police van brought the 41-year-old accused RCMP officer into Ottawa's courthouse this morning. After meeting with a doctor, the Mountie made a brief court appearance. He's accused of beating and sexually abusing a young boy. And he and a woman also face charges of forcible confinement and failing to provide the necessaries of life. The child is believed to have been locked up for months in the basement of a suburban Ottawa house, shackled and handcuffed. Earlier this week, he managed to escape, and he was found wandering the streets, starving and dehydrated. Soon after arriving at the house, Ottawa police arrested the RCMP officer and child abuse investigators were called in. Soon after, a 34-year-old woman was also arrested and police say there was more than one victim. News of the arrests shocked the residents of this neighborhood, but one neighbor says he had a previous run-in with the RCMP officer. The neighbor says one day his two dogs accidentally got loose and the RCMP officer flashed his police badge and threatened to shoot the dog. The RCMP won't say much about the accused, other than he's been suspended and has not been on active duty since May of 2011. Although court documents suggest he was a member of the RCMP's anti-terrorism unit. A lot of the details about this case can't be reported because of a publication ban. But one police officer was willing to say, this is a case of horrific abuse. Jean Perbeau, Global News, Ottawa. We have another publication ban of a retired RCMP officer in Penticton going in and killing his ex-wife, okay, who has taken an instant publication ban on this. You think oh. there's a problem with the training? You know, ah, but remember, we've got tape with, you know, McKinnon saying that it's not the training that's the problem. Of course, we have rookies training rookies in Kelowna, and that's the real quote, but that's ignored also. We've got to take a very quick break, but we're going to keep recording because there's some other things that we want to put together. We've got stories coming up on... On the Occupy Cops. We're talking about other situations down south and more here in B.C. as well. It's the RCMP and police brutality under the microscope right now. You're with Radio Free Canada. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. Please stay tuned. Get informed and join us May 18th at Kelowna City Hall. Shut up, shut up, shut up. 